Welcome to the program today. My name is Christine Sneeringer, and I am very excited to present to you David Kyle Foster and his amazing story of overcoming sexual brokenness. David, you're an author and a speaker, and you lead a national ministry, an international ministry, in fact. And it's just, I'm thrilled to have you here on the show today. Well, it's great to be here. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity to get this message out that God wants to heal sexually broken people. And it doesn't matter to him how broken a person is, how perverse their life has been. He wants to heal them and redeem them and take them with him into his kingdom. Amen to that, brother. And I am so excited because your story is one of incredible extremes. You were a prostitute, of all things. Yes, I ended up a prostitute for seven years during my years in Hollywood. And by then, I thought God could not possibly love me uh, because I didn't think God loved prostitutes. I could only imagine. You went from prostitute to priest. In fact, we're going to show a clip right now from the 700 Club that's going to tell that story. And we're going to come back and let you tell more details. Okay. I remember days when I would be on the set starring in a movie with NBC executives from New York all around me telling me I was great and wonderful in the next James Dean. And then going out that night and prostituting. I was professional actor by day, male prostitute by night. By day, David Foster was a rising star who basked in the bright lights of Hollywood. But by night, he lurked in the shadows of a dangerous underworld, gripped by an addiction he couldn't control. Both seemed unlikely places for the son of a Presbyterian minister. As a young boy, David loved the movies. It was there his dream to act was born. It put into me a desire to become an actor that I wasn't even aware of. One of the things I'd do is I'd go to the movies and I'd sit there all day long because um, it was a fantasy world. It was a world where things were okay. Everything was okay. There was always a happy ending. People loved each other. Unlike David's home, where he says he felt rejected by the most influential man in his life. I didn't have my dad be emotionally close to me like I longed for. And, and he didn't know that he needed to be doing that because his dad had never taught him how to do that. But, you know, I took that as a sign that he didn't love me. And needing a dad's love and affection and approval and modeling and all of that uh, caused me to look for it elsewhere. And I remember early on uh, looking at other fellows in, in uh, junior high school and high school. Not to lust after them. There was nothing sexual about it. I was just looking for what it was in them that made them so happy and well-liked and popular. And um, I was looking for what was missing in me, in them. But David's fascination with men created inner turmoil. He spent his teenage years lonely and depressed, alienated from his father and from God. My dad, being a pastor and being Scottish, and uh, actually contributed to my um, disfavor of God. I, I associated my father with God. In college, heavy drug use freed him to act out his homosexual inclinations. And that led to such self-disgust, David wanted to end his life. I tried to take my life immediately after having that experience. And God did not allow it to happen again. It wasn't the first time David had attempted suicide. He had heard voices telling him to kill himself all of his life. But in every suicide attempt that failed, David saw the hand of God. He told me in each case that he loved me by saving my life. And that got me interested in God again. That, that gave me a spark of hope. I would always go in, out into nature to find God. And I went to the pier in St. Petersburg one night to talk to him. And it turned out to be the place where male prostitutes hung out, which I did not know. David not only discovered this was where prostitutes hung out, he was accidentally mistaken as one. It just totally surprised me. And it made me mad because I'd gone there to talk to God, and here I am in the midst of male prostitutes and people thinking I'm one. David prostituted himself that night for the first time, and he vowed it would be the last. Instead, it just caused a craving for more. For a kid who's always wanted an older man to hold them and to tell them they were wonderful and that they were okay, 
It was instantly addicting to me. After college, David concealed his life as a prostitute and went to Hollywood to pursue his dream to act. Unlike most aspiring actors, David's career quickly blossomed. In fact, the first part I ever read for, I got, and it was the starring role in a, in a movie. So I had one of those experiences you only read about. I ended up with the best agents in town, a string of national commercials, um, another starring role, uh, several feature roles, and being written up in the magazines about, and, and yet I would continue to be a male prostitute on the side. So I was like trying to destroy whatever success I was seeking. There was so much self-hatred in me. After several years in Hollywood, David's double life took its toll. He longed for spiritual fulfillment, so he searched to find God. Unfortunately, he was misled by a friend into a cult. But during this time, something very interesting happened in David's parents' life. In the meantime, my parents had gotten born again. My dad, my cold, severe dad, Scottish dad, had gotten born again at a charismatic convention of Presbyterians. So I started getting into my head that I had to go to Israel to find Jesus because I was starting to doubt some of the things the guru was saying. David went to Israel and discovered things about Christ he never realized, especially Christ's love for him. I'm walking down the Mount of Olives, the last day I'm in Israel, tagging along behind this Christian tour group, getting myself a free tour. And, uh, and when, the, when the pastor leading the tour group would read from the Bible things Jesus said at various points on the Mount of Olives, I heard Jesus saying them to me. I instantly knew the Bible was literally the Word of God. I went into the Garden of Gethsemane and I knelt at that rock, the very rock that Christ knelt at, and I prayed and I said, God, my guru can do miracles and you can do miracles and how am I supposed to know the difference? Who's of God and who's of Satan? And uh, he said to me, who proved his love for you? And, well, Jesus, obviously he died on the cross. There's the answer. David dedicated his life to Christ that day, and his life dramatically changed. David went back to Los Angeles, left the cult, and found a church home. His life grew spiritually, and through prayer, David was delivered from homosexuality. But David's complete deliverance came after he paid a surprise visit to his father's church. I was so transformed in my countenance, he didn't even recognize me, and he goes, Oh, oh, what has happened to you? And um, I said, you know, Dad, I'm born again. It's the first time I'd seen my dad weep. And we hugged. David and his father reconciled. Even though his father never lived to see it, David fulfilled his father's dream. He'd always wanted to have a son go to seminary. And he had four boys and none of us had seemed interested. And he finally got to have his dream fulfilled. Today, David Foster is an ordained Episcopal priest with a ministry tailored for people struggling with sexual bondage. David believes his life is a message of God's faithfulness and redemption. God says, uh, the generations of the unfaithful can go on for a few generations. The generations of the righteous are for a thousand generations. No matter how perverse your life has been, you can be the first of a generation, of thousands of generations of righteous, if you'll just turn to God. That is the coolest story of what God has done in David's life. You know, we're going to be back with more of this interview with David Kyle Foster, director of Mastering Life Ministries, so stay with us. Hi, everyone. You know, we offer a lot of information on our program, and I realize our time speeds by pretty quickly. We talk a lot about different kinds of sexual problems, too. We want to point you to some resources, one of them in particular I'm looking at right now, a great book by David Kyle Foster of the program. And uh, this is his great work, Sexual Healing. It covers a wide variety of topics that you might like more information about, whether you yourself have concerns or you're concerned for a loved one or friend. Certainly, if you're in pastoral care, you'll want to know about issues often not well understood by church culture. So in David's book, he takes a look at issues like identity confusion, bisexuality, uh, 
childhood sexual abuse in dealing with the predator and for those who've been abused in overcoming their victimization. Uh, pornography, sexual addiction are big concerns today, as is the issue of masturbation, a struggle for so many universally. It's nice to know that while there are problems, there are solutions. David's book helps to give us understanding and the way forward. So consider that book, Sexual Healing. Get it at purepassion.us. Purepassion.us. From Hollywood to Jerusalem, from prostitute to pastor, could you please tell me more how this happened in your life? Well, you know, I was at, angry at God my whole life. I, I hated God because my father had been a pastor and I hated my father. So coming to the Lord was, was very difficult for me because I, I, I also had to admit that I had been wrong. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest thing of all because I had so much pride in me. But God was working on me so gently and for so long, and I realized he loved me even though I had done all of these perverse things, and I could not escape that love. That's what I've been looking for my whole life. What I want to know is how did you know he loved you that much? Who, who communicated that to you? Well, there in the Garden of Gethsemane, as we just saw in the story, the Lord actually spoke to me, and he, and he pointed out that he's the one who proved his love for me that my guru hadn't done that. My guru made me feel loved, mm -hmm. but he hadn't actually demonstrated it through a self-sacrificing action. And when I realized this God who I hated loved me, it just blew all of my circuits. And I had to surrender. You can't, you gotta surrender to something like that. Well, absolutely, it's irresistible. But then what though? You surrender, but you still have been cultivating these relationships and these attractions. So suddenly did he just come in and fix it? Well, that's a very good question. I, I went to a path. I did, still didn't trust churches. But one day, one day I walked down to this church and I said to myself, well, I'm going to go worship God in there, even though they're all hypocrites as far as I was concerned. Um, You're but not I, bitter, right? <laughs> no, I wasn't bitter. I, I had no grudges. But, uh, so I walked into this church. It turned out it was full of born-again Christians. It was Hollywood Presbyterian Church. And I went to the pastor a few days later, and I, and I thought, well, I'm just going to lay it out for him. So, so he'll either love me or kick me out right away. Let's get this over with, right? <laughs> Let's get this over with. So, I, so I, I said to him, you know, I've been sleeping with two and three people a night for 10 years, and, and you're going to tell me to stop. And I'm here to tell you I can't just stop. And he looked at me, and he goes, well, I'm not going to ask you to stop. And I remember thinking, what's the matter with you? You're a preacher. You're supposed to be asking me to stop. You must be one of them liberals I've been hearing about. But as it turned out, the message he was trying to communicate to me was, good, you know you can't stop. Let's mm. let Jesus do it for you. Wow. And it was the most important lesson I could have ever learned. And I got to learn it right off the bat. And so I was fresh in my salvation experience. Nobody had gotten to me yet to tell me what God could not do. Mm -hmm. And I just believed him. And so I said, okay, Jesus, if you will give me the power, I will stop this very day. And that was the last day. He set me free. He broke the power of drugs. I was a massive drug addict. He broke the power of alcoholism, and he broke the power of sexual addiction that had dominated my life for over 10 years. Well, I'm just amazed at the fact that this pastor who knew, I mean, I just love his heart in saying, you, you know, agreeing with you that you can't do it by yourself. You need the Lord. You need Jesus. And he's going to have to do it through you. And the fact that you knew that as well, not that you knew that, but that he communicated that to you. I was naive enough to believe him. And it, by golly, it was true. And, and the Lord's power came forth and set me free. Now, I still had a lot of brokenness. I still had a lot that needed to be healed. But what God set me free from was the power that those things had over me to control me and manipulate me. Well, did, did your attractions immediately go away or was this something that happened over time? It took, I would say, a good seven years because I was in the lifestyle very deeply at very perverse levels. So it took a good seven years before I could say, I feel like I'm healed. Of course, I'm still in the healing process even 25 years later. But in terms of a basic healing package, so to speak, I, it took about seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Were you discouraged at all during that time? Were you wondering, is this ever going to happen? I mean, how did you hang on for seven years? There were moments of discouragement because I wanted God to zap me and just instantly make me heterosexual. Don't we all want <laughs> just please free me now yeah. immediately? But if he had done that, I wouldn't have appreciated mm -hmm. it. I would have gone back to the lifestyle probably because I would have discounted what the gift would have been. Well, and the character he needed to build through you. Exactly. He builds character during those years where you have to rely on him and go to him moment by moment throughout the day for power and for grace. Well, I want to know, was it just you and God or were there other relationships that helped you along the way? 
Well, this was back in 1980, and you just couldn't walk into the church and say, hey, I've been a male prostitute. Well, you did that the first day, but... <laughs> well, actually, you're right, I did, but um, most churches would kick you out on your ear back then. Now, it's much better these days. A lot of churches have learned a lot of grace over the 25 years, but I was afraid of getting kicked out of churches, so I didn't bring it up for at least nine years. So you weren't sharing what you were struggling with or what you were coming out of? No, I just, it was me and God kneeling at my bed every night going, God, I'm, I'm being tempted by this, or I'm reading this in the Bible and I don't understand it, or I hate you, or I'm still mad at you for this. And I would just lay out to God my deep heart every night, and he graciously and humbly stood there with me and walked me through it. Did you, what happened after that? Well, finally in 1989, uh, supernaturally this pastor's wife got a word of knowledge that I was supposed to get up and speak at this conference on sexual shame. She didn't even know my story, but I thought she did. So I got up and told my whole story publicly for the first time at this conference. And as I was telling it, people were weeping and crying and falling down. I had people coming up to me afterwards saying, you know, I've never told anybody this, but compared to your story, it's not so bad. So I'm going to tell you. And I knew in that moment that God had birthed the ministry in me, that he was going to use my perverted background to set other people free. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking when I, when I was watching the clip, is that if God could deliver you from this, God could, could deliver anybody. And that's what he does. He takes somebody just out of the pit and helps them, cleans them up, dusts them off, helps them to walk uprightly, although it makes it sound so easy. I know it was a struggle and it was a process. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. It's still a process. I'm learning how to, to not be so proud and not be so this and not be so that. It's, it's an ongoing uh, struggle, but you know, we, we we shouldn't focus on the the aim of perfection because we will not reach that. And if you're a perfectionist, that's going to frustrate you to death. We've got to focus on intimacy with God, loving Him, pleasing Him. That's what He's looking for. He's looking at our hearts. He's not looking at our performance. He's looking at our hearts. Is my heart fixed on Him? Am I pursuing Him as the bridegroom, according to the Bible? I have married God now that I've become born again and he is now my bridegroom and do I have that intimate relationship with him that's what he cares about more than anything else but wait there's more we've got one more break but we're going to come back with more of that interview with David Kyle Foster stay with us hi everyone you know we like to make resources available to you and we've got another book here by David Kyle Foster of the show and this book transformed into his image deals with getting your life back on track if it's been off track. And particularly for those of us we work with, you know, who have struggled in sexual ways, what is on track? What does that look like? And in David's book, he takes a look at several different concepts. What does it look like to be healed? Why do some people remain in sin and brokenness? And what is the making of a minister in addressing concerns like this and going forward in your life? So, written out of his experience as a man who has to practice what he preaches, combined with the fact that he's got an international ministry and working with people regardless of continent or culture, there are redemptive truths his book makes available to you. So, if you'd like more information about how to order this book, you can visit our website at purepassion.us for David's book, transformed into his image, which is the real point. So come again to purepassion.us for ordering information. Even if you blow it along the way, he's still with you. He hasn't left you. Don't give up. Keep going on. Is that correct? Exactly. God will never forsake you. Once you turn to Jesus Christ, he will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter what failure you have along the way. That is so true, and I found that true in my own life. And so thank you so much for sharing that. Tell me a little bit about your ministry before we wrap things up. Well, the ministry, Mastering Life Ministries, is the sponsor of this program. And um, we exist to equip the body of Christ so that we can better minister to sexually broken people mm -hmm. and to reach out to people who are sexually broken and show them how God brings healing. He brings it through grace and loving you into the kingdom. Well, David, I believe there are people watching right now that may be struggling with their own sexual struggles. And I would like for you to look right into the camera and say a prayer that you could help somebody who is wondering, how can I find the same freedom that David found? I'd love to. You know, if you're watching here today, I just want to tell you that it doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you, and he wants to save you right now. He wants you and his kingdom seated at his table. And so if you pray this prayer with me, God will cause you to be filled with his Holy Spirit and set free. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for those precious ones watching now. 
I pray that you will pour out the same love and the same grace that you poured into my heart that won me to your heart. That irresistible grace, Lord, just pour it into their heart right now. Let them feel it. Let them know it. Let them know that there is no condemnation for anyone that turns to Christ Jesus because you have died on the cross and already paid the penalty for their sin. Father, I pray that not only will you rescue them from being eternally lost, but that you will also fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will give them the capacity to walk in holiness that they don't naturally have on their own, and that you will give them the discernment and the, and the frame of mind that turns to you in those moments of trial and, and struggle. And be there for them, Father. Speak to them and give them the answers and unlock the secrets of their brokenness and set them free. I pray this in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed with David, we'd like to invite you to continue what you've started. Why not visit our website? There you'll find articles, interviews, even a question and answer section with all kinds of information that could make your walk out of sexual sin a little bit easier. Just go to www.purepassion.us. At the site, you'll also find a section of audio files where you can listen to more of David Kyle Foster's teaching on subjects such as homosexuality, pornography, masturbation, and child sexual abuse. We also want to encourage you to take advantage of the link section on the site where you can connect with the websites of many other like-minded ministries, including Christine's and even my own. Once again, that's www.purepassion.us. Now let me leave you with a thought from Scripture. It's found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Our God has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him. May you discover more of that treasure in our Lord Jesus Christ this week. From all of us at Pure Passion, God bless you. I'm Cy Rogers. See you next time. <laughs>